Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson. Today, we are going to take another new and interesting topic that is the coordinate geometry. And what you learn first in this minute topic is how to find the letter of a line second. So let's begin. After completing the very lesson today, my dear student, you'll be able to find the letter of a line second. And this is what I hope you'll be able to do after completing the very lesson today. So as usually in your paper, write a segment of the lesson that is Mars is fun. Today, I will introduce you to what we call Pascal Triangle. This is just arrangement of numbers, which we shall see after completing the very lesson today, so don't go away. So to begin the lesson, let us learn first how to find the length of a line segment. So to do that, let's consider a line segment AB. That line segment AB has endpoints A and B, and the coordinates of those endpoints said for A is this x1 and comma y1. And for the endpoint B, the coordinate were x2, comma y2. These are the coordinates of the two endpoints. You can see it drawn on a Cartesian plane with the coordinates of A, x1, y1, and the coordinates of B, x2, y2. So to find the length of this line segment, what we need to do is to complete a right angle triangle. That is, I'm going to draw a line from this point horizontally to the right. And I'm going to draw another line from this point to be vertically down. Where the two lines meet will be obviously angle 90 degrees. So I'm going to employ the Pythagoras theorem here to attempt to get the length of this longest side, which is the hypotenuse. But to do that, I have to have the two other sides, the length of the two other sides. So this side, look at it, the horizontal here, the horizontal distance here will now be nothing but uh, x2 minus x1. That is the x coordinate of B minus the x coordinate of A will give you the length of this horizontal side of this right angle triangle. Similarly, the vertical side here. To find it is length, what I'm simply do the y coordinate at B minus the y coordinate of A will give you the length of the distance here. So it will now be y2 minus y1. So I have two sides here. I wanted to find the third one, which is the hypotenuse. So according to Pythagoras theorem, remember it says the square of the longest side is the something as the sum of the squares of the two other sides. In this case, my longest side is the length AB. So AB squared. This will now be according to Pythagoras theorem. This side square plus uh, this side square. So let me write it. I'm going to have x2 minus x1 whole squared plus y2 minus y1 whole squared. This is what Pythagoras says exactly. So to find AB, not AB square, I will now take square root of both sides. So after squaring, after squaring the left hand side, I'm going to have only AB. That is the length AB. And the square root of the right hand side, I'm going to have root of uh, inside the root, I'm going to have x2 minus x1 whole squared plus uh, y2 minus y1 whole squared. This is the simple formula we want to use it to find the length of any line segment if the end points of that line segment you have their coordinates. We're going to take examples how we can make use of this simple formula to find uh, the length of any line segment. Let's just move and take examples. Example number one, we have a line AB. And that line AB has the coordinate of A as minus 2, comma 3. And the coordinate of B as 1, comma 5. And the question asked is to find the length of that line segment that is AB. Solution to this, what we simply do is to write down that formula. We used to find the length of a line segment. The formula, remember, says AB. That is the length of AB equals to square root of inside the square root is x2 minus x1 whole squared plus y2 minus y1 whole squared, where this x1, y1 is the coordinate of one of the endpoints, and x2, y2 is the coordinates of the other endpoint. So let me just uh, let me just mark which one would now be my x1, which one would now be my y1 and which will now be my x2 and y2. So there I take uh, the coordinate of A to be your x1, y1, while the coordinate of the point to be to be your x2, y2. So in that case, 
minus 2 is dx1 and 3 is y1 and uh, there 1 is dx2 and 5 is dy2. So I'm going to substitute those values correctly in this very formula. There gives me 1 minus minus 2. I have replaced the x2, look at it, by 1. And replaced the x1 by minus 2, look at it. So I'm going to have 1 minus minus 2. Then moving to the second bracket, y2 is now 5 and y1 is now this value 3. So you have 5 minus 3. So there we continue. So you now simplify what is in the brackets. 1 minus minus will now change it to plus, so you have 1 plus 2, which end at 3. And this 5 minus 3 simply gives you 2, so you are going to have 3 square plus the 2 square. And the 3 here is 1 minus minus 2, which I repeat, it says 1 plus 2, which gives you this 3. And the 5 minus 3 gives you this 2. So next is to find the values of this 3 raised to, so to the power of 2 and 2 raised to the power of 2. 3 raised to the power of 2 is simply nothing but 9, and 2 raised to 2 is 4. So 9 plus 4 gives you 13. So the length of this line segment AB is now going to be square root of 13 units. So let's just take another example. Example number 2 it says calculate the length of the line segment XY. <laughs> Given that the coordinate of X is 3,0, and the coordinate of y is minus 1 comma 3. Solution to this very problem. So we write down the formula for finding the length of the line segment. In the other example, we use the line segment AB. So the formula we now said length of AB. But in this case, as the name of our line segment is XY, so I'm going to write XY, that is length of the line XY equals to square root of x2 minus x1 whole squared plus y2 minus y1 whole squared. All these two brackets are inside the root. So you now find which one is your x1, which one y1, which one x2, y2. Any of this coordinate can be your x1, then the other one x2, y2. But I'll try to mark first one x1, y1, and the second one x2, y2. So there I now substitute my x1 and x2. From here, x1 is 3, x2 is minus 1. So substituting there correctly, you now have inside the square root of the first bracket, you now have minus 1 minus 3. Whole squared plus another bracket, 3 minus 0. I have replaced the x2 by minus 1. Look at it here, x2 minus 1. And replace the x1 by 3. Look at it here. x1 is 3. And there I have replaced y2. Look at y2 is 3. So I replace it there. And replaced y1 by 0. Look at it here. Look at it here. So this is what I have just now. So simplifying what is in the brackets. Minus 1 minus 3 gives you minus 4. And 3 minus 0 gives you 3, so you are going to have the square root of minus 4 squared plus 3 squared. Square of minus 4 is nothing but uh, 16, and 3 squared is nothing but 9. So adding 16 and 9, goo goo will give you 25, and the square root of 25 is nothing but 5. So the length of this line, segment xy, is nothing but 5 units. So with these few examples, I hope you can now find the length of the segment if the endpoints and the coordinates of the endpoints is given. So thank you for your attention and let me just move to the last segment of is fun and give you the Pascal triangle. So Pascal triangle, let us learn what is Pascal triangle. Pascal triangle is nothing but triangular stack or arrangement of numbers, and this was developed by a French mathematician called Blaise Pascal. This is the person that developed this Pascal triangle. You can see even the name Pascal triangle is from his name, Pascal, Blaise Pascal. So let us learn how we can now make this arrangement to make this triangular pattern crazy. So in the very first row, you have just one number there. Moving to the second row, there will be two numbers. And the rule says uh, 
you always begin with one and end with one. So as we have just the two numbers in the second row, so I'm going to have one, one. But moving to the third row, the rule is always begin with one and ends with one. So there will be three numbers in the third row. So I'm going to write my one, one, and then I'm going to write this middle number. And this middle number, how you now find it. You just add these two numbers at the top of it. One plus one will give you this number. So it is going to be two. So your third row is complete. You now move to the fourth row. Fourth row, there will be four numbers. And they will start with one and ends with one. So these are the numbers at the extreme ends. So I'm going to find out these two main numbers. The first one here, I'm going to add the two numbers at the top of it. One and two. Add it together, will give you three. This also, you add the two numbers at the top of it. So two plus one will give you three. So your fourth row is complete. You now move to the fifth row. In the fifth row, there will be five numbers. You can see the numbers are increasing as you go down. So starting with one and end with one. So I'm going to find out this three missing the numbers here. So the one here place will now be the two numbers at the top added together. That will give you four. This will give you six. This will give you another four. So we'll now move to row number six. Starting with one and end with one. So you now find that this missing four numbers. This number is going to be five. This is going to be ten. This is another ten. And this is another five. I'm just adding the two numbers at the top. So if we go down like that, this is what we shall be doing. So each row will now begin with one and ends with one. And the numbers in between will now just add the two numbers at the top of it to find any other number. So let me just quickly do that. So this I'm going to have 6, 15, 20, 15, and 6. Uh, moving to the next row, starting with 1 and ends with 1. The numbers here at the middle will now be nothing but 7, 21, 35, and the rest. I'm just adding two numbers at the top to get that number. And let's get uh, one, two more rows there. This is what you are going to have. And let me just write the last row there. I now have 9, 36, 84, and the rest. This is your Pascal triangle. And this triangle or this arrangement of numbers has uh, very, very interesting properties, which we shall see in our next lesson. So thank you for your attention. We see those properties of this Pascal triangle, interesting ones among them in our subsequent lesson. Thank you for your attention.